Good evening, gentlemen. And on gentlemen, uh, now that it is well into Retro Challenge 2021, I guess I should stop screwing around and actually do something with Dan Lawrence's D&D here. Now, um, before we do anything here, I just want to say that um, I am kind of cheating. Uh, this project started long before Retro Challenge um, began, and um, the main reason I entered something relating to it in Retro Challenge isn't to try to win Retro Challenge or anything, um, but just to try to, you know, spread the word about this project to see if anyone else was interested. So um, I feel kind of bad about that because I, th I think there are actually cash prizes in Retro Challenge, and I have I have no doubt that I will not win um, any of those. Um, but it, it's still kind of skeevy of me anyway. So full disclosure, um, I may not actually get around to accomplishing the stated goal of getting this running on uh, the TRS-80 Model 2 by the end of the month. Um, so don't don't vote for this project um, if you're one of the judges. Uh, it shouldn't win because I'm a cheating cheater and if it does happen to win for some reason, which I seriously doubt, but just in case, um, I'll donate the proceeds, the winnings to um, the Vintage Computer Federation. So, okay. Um, right. Let's talk about... Oh, wow, my audio clicked bad there. Whatever. I don't care. I don't have time to fix it. Let's just do this. All right. Um, let's talk about the spells in Dan Lawrence's D&D. &D. Uh, so I went through the good old basic source code. Uh, all of the uh, magic spells are in the combat module. Um, even the ones that are cast outside of combat, uh, which is interesting. But I guess that's how basic is. And... Um, took all of the uh took it all apart and figured out how everything's supposed to work uh there are previous videos on this um where we've uh you know gone through and looked at the source code and figured out what all of these uh records in this uh disk backed array are and all of that stuff and there, there's a spreadsheet here in the uh down in the uh source code repository that uh, contains that information which which you can get um you can get that uh, all of this stuff out of the Subversion repository, um, which I will link down in the video description. Um, or you can you can just uh, go to uh, ocfco.net. Um, that's my shitty website, and there uh, should be a link to the Subversion repository uh, if you want to follow along. All right, so. Let's go over all these spells and how they work, which is going to be boringer than shit, so um, you should probably fetch an adult beverage if you haven't already. Okay, so, of course, this being Dungeons & Dragons, or, I mean D&D, &D, it's not a, an officially licensed TSR product. Um, but being D&D, uh, &D, it has, of course, a magic missile, which we can cast at the darkness. Um, and if you're not in combat, it... Uh, T still allows you to cast the spell and decrements your spell counters, so um, it doesn't prevent you from wasting your spells. Um, if you are in combat, um, it applies d6 worth of damage or a six-sided die worth of damage directly to the monster. It doesn't take the monster's armor, shields, dodge bonus, or anything like that into account. So that's actually kind of handy at low levels, um, but at higher levels, it doesn't. The damage doesn't increase as your character level does so at higher levels that spell probably becomes um, relatively useless as even as a magician um, once you're you know running around with like a plus 10 dagger or something like that your regular attack um, does far more than the uh, than the spell does even though you think of or well, it's not Thaco in this code, but even though your attack bonus isn't as good as a fighter's, I think the weapon would still be more effective overall. Anyway, uh, the next spell we'll look at is Charm. It also allows you to, you know, waste combat spells. Um, you can't charm undead monsters, and doppelgangers are magic resistant, so you can't cast, um, like, these uh, mind control type spells 
on doppelgangers. The damage, the direct damage spells still affect them, but the um, the funny spells that do not damage stuff um, don't work on the doppelganger. So there, um, there's a chance for it to succeed or fail uh, based on the uh, player character's intelligence and charisma values. Um, if it fails, then you know combat goes on as usual. Uh, if uh, if the spell works, then you have the chance to kill the monster or just run away. If you try to kill the monster, um, there's a chance that it will break the spell and resume attacking you, but if you try to just run away, um, you always get away. Of course, you don't get the loot that way. Um, the shield spell, uh, there's a, there are a, a number of counters in the... Um, in the uh, in the player character record, and uh, this just uh, sets that counter to d10, and every every turn um, it gets decremented by one. And um, the uh, combat the combat uh, combat loop uh, takes that into account, which we uh, had a previous video about. So you can go back and watch that if you're interested in that. I won't go back over how the shield spell works in combat. Um, but uh, this is where this is where the counter gets set when you cast that spell. All right, the sleep spell. Uh, of course, you can't cast it on undead or on doppelgangers. Um, and uh, if uh, the spell succeeds, it ends up working almost exactly like the charm spell, which is peculiar. Now, um, the chances of the uh, sleep spell working are based entirely on intelligence. There's no charisma value figured into it like there is with the charm spell. So depending on your character's stats, um, the sleep spell or the charm spell may be better than the other, you know. All right, protection from evil and light both just set counters in the player character's record. Uh, that get decremented every turn, uh, as we saw with the shield spell. Phantasmal Force, uh, that's, that's, that's like an illusion spell. Uh, uh, you, I guess the, um, this, this is, this is a whole, this is something from old school D&D. They changed the rules of, um, Phantasmal Forces later on, so you, they were less powerful, but, um, in old school D&D, um, you could try to, create an illusion that made something think that it was dead, and if it believed the illusion, then it would actually die. Uh, so that's what's happening here. Um, and it's based on intelligence again. And it just flat out kills the monster if, if it succeeds. Um, and interestingly, um, it would appear that uh, this spell will also work on undead and doppelgangers. Um, I guess since the magic isn't directly affecting... Well, but it, no, it's an illusion spell. So how is that any different than like a charm spell or a sleep spell? It's not an external effect. I don't know. Maybe that's an oversight in the original code. Maybe, uh, maybe those two checks should have been in that spell and they're not. Alright, the web spell. Um... It's very much like charm, and uh, what was the other one? The charm spell and the uh, the, or, or the sleep spell. Yeah, um, if uh, if you manage to make the web do its thing, you get prompted to kill or evade. And uh, evade and kill both always work in this case. Uh, there is no chance um, for the monster to break out of the web uh, if you try to kill it. Um, and the uh, chances of this spell succeeding are based on intelligence and dexterity. Uh, Lightning Bolt is uh, another direct damage spell. It doesn't take um, the armor and sh uh, shield spell and all that stuff into account. It does uh, the damage that it does is a six-sided die per character level, so the damage does increase as the uh, player character becomes more experienced. But unlike the Magic Missile spell, the Lightning Bolt spell does allow a saving throw, and if the monster succeeds in its saving throw. Um, then the spell only does half damage. Uh, strength, Levitate, Invisibility, yes, it's spelled wrong in the original basic source code, uh, sets counters uh, the same way as those other spells uh, did, and um, 
what uh, the, the effects of these spells um, you can see in the combat and movement modules. We've done the combat module, I don't think we've done the movement module yet, but basically levitate prevents you from falling down pit traps. Um, yeah, uh, anyhow. Uh, fireball, very much light, light, like lightning bolt, except it does a 10-sided die um, per uh, character level instead of a 6-sided die. And uh, this 10d1 right here, that's that's not a typing error on my part. That's actual the that's actually how the random number function is called in the original source code. My uh, supposition is that was supposed to be a um, a uh, 1d10, not a 10d1, because um, 10 one-sided dice um, are going to produce a very different result than one ten-sided die, right? Uh, so, rolling that saving throw um, is apparently a bug uh, in the original source code. Ah, whatever. Anyhow, now even though it says that uh, Fireball sets the thing on fire, the fire doesn't persist for, um, for multiple rounds. It just does damage once and that's it. Alright, Confusion. Um, uh, let's see. I should have looked through these before uh, before recording this because I I did this file in several sittings and I can't remember the earlier ones. Um, yeah, I guess uh, confused just um, tricks the monster into attacking itself. Um, yeah, uh, I'm glad I don't start attacking myself once I drink too much. That would be bad. Okay, pass wall. Uh, that lets you go through. A, ro a wall, and incidentally, um, it does appear to prevent the um, the player from moving into uh, solid rock and dying, um, which I didn't think it did. Maybe this changed in the in the later version, the Pascal version, which eventually was ported to the PC. Um, because I, I thought it allowed you to step into a rock and die, but uh, no, I guess it doesn't. In no, it can't in the PC version of D&D because there are no solid rocks in that. I'm a, maybe I'm thinking of the Unix version. I I don't know. Don't pay any attention to me. I'm dumber than shit. Uh, so yeah, that just lets you walk through walls. Um, yeah, hold monster, very much like the sleep and uh, charm spells. Uh, it's based entirely on charisma. Um, whether it works or not, uh, which is a little odd. Um, but yeah, once the spell takes effect, you can either kill it or, uh, try to kill it or run away. Uh, all right. The fear spell, the continual light spell. Oh, excuse me. Oh, shit ass. Ah, yawning all over you. Uh, set counters like, uh, those other spells did, um, you can see what effects those spells have uh, in the combat and movement modules, like we mentioned before. Now, here's an interesting thing. Uh, I'll note, okay, the teleport spell um, does let you uh, teleport into solid rock and die. However, um, doing so doesn't appear to have anything to do with uh, having um, special feature type 15 in the dungeon cell that you're um, teleporting into. It's just a flat, ch or, well not a flat chance, but it's just a chance uh, based on your intelligence score that you'll teleport into stone and die. Um, uh, but then if it if it works, um, it actually teleports you, at least in the VMS version source code here, this I think I'm pretty sure it wasn't like this in the PC version, but um, it can teleport you to any level anywhere in the dungeon. Just, it's, it's it just crazy crazy time. So that's fascinating. Um, yeah. Alright, power word kill. Um, that just kills a monster if it uh, succeeds. And right. Prismatic wall or blade barrier, which is also misspelled in the original source code. Um, creates a wall that the monster can't go through and it'll either leave while the wall's there or it'll just wait for you and attack you. Eh. Time stop stops time.
sets a counter like those others. You know. All right. Uh, wall of fire uh, creates a wall of flames around you. Now, um, if the monster tries to go through the flames, it dies immediately. Um, or if it, uh, it can just go away. Um, or it can wait and attack you when the flames disappear. Summon demons, an interesting one. Um, if you successfully summon the demon, it kills whatever monster is in your current location, but there's a chance that you can't get rid of it and it will stick around and whip your ass. Uh, so the, uh, the demon that's summoned is five levels mm, stronger than the player. Uh, it has um, the same stats as the Balrog, uh, that's M20 there, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty hardcore. That's a pretty hardcore monster, so that spell is quite dangerous and I don't like it. Uh, Cure Light Wounds heals 1d6 plus 1 hit points. Simple enough. Turn Undead makes zombies and other such undead run away. Uh, it, they do leave their treasure, though. This I6 equals 0. That only clears the monster from the current dungeon location. It doesn't clear the treasure from there. So apparently, um, the undead get so scared that they drop all their loot. All right, Detect Trap, Silence, and Prayer. Counters, like we talked about before. You can look at those other um, modules to see how those work. Cure Serious Wounds heals 2d6 plus 2 hit points. Um, simple enough. Dispel is like Turn Undead, but it destroys the undead instead of making it run away. Now, um... Yeah, the chances of it, uh, the chances of it taking effect are based on slightly different, um, different statistics than, uh, Turning Undead. See, Turning Undead is based on the monster level and the character level. Um, it's, the result is adjusted by that, and it's based on the, uh, player character's wisdom. Um, Dispel Undead, uh, is just a throw against wisdom. It doesn't take the, uh... It doesn't take the monster's, um, or the player's level into account, which is interesting. Um, other than that, um, it act functionally is identical to Turn Undead. The monster goes away and leaves its treasure behind. Uh, Plague kills stuff, or or kills you, in every time in ten that you cast this spell. Uh, like, like Summon Demon, Plague is uh, too dangerous to use, in my opinion. Um, Finger of Death uh, is very similar to Power Word Kill. Uh, you point at something, you say die, die, it does, maybe, maybe it doesn't, whatever. Now, the Raise Dead spell, that last clerical spell, um, you can't actually cast it. Uh, I mean, you can try to cast it, but it'll always fail. Um, but uh, if you go back and look in the combat module that we discussed earlier, um, if your character is a cleric and you get killed... Um, apparently you can try to cast Raise Dead on yourself with your dying breath and come back, which is kind of cheaty. That's not how the actual D&D &D rules work. I mean, the tabletop D&D rules don't work that way. But, um, I guess this being a single character party, they had to take some liberties with with the rules along with everything else apparently too all right so that's that's it for this uh for this crappy video uh, i appreciate you all joining me and uh, uh i guess next time maybe i'll actually write some code wouldn't that be something all right see you later